In this lesson, we're going to continue building our code and we're going to be learning about app states and page states. So head back to Flutterflow and go to the restaurant page. So I'm going to go back and in here, I can just go ahead and change that to add. This, this looks okay. Uh, maybe give it our primary color and then define some logic. So what I want to do is actually create a cart and I know that a cart is actually not permanent, right? Because you create it, once you press the order, the cart is cleared, right? We don't want every time a cart is created to create it in Firebase and then delete it again. Those will be so many requests and with time that might get expensive. So this is actually a good way to implement this. So we're going to go to app states. So this is like a memory on your phone or like a memory on your application so that is actually not being stored in firebase but it's staying on the app itself so i'm gonna go ahead and click add app state and i'm gonna call this card items right and then the tab gonna be document reference and then you're gonna go ahead and select watch document menu items and this is a list right because you can have a lot of items in one card so I'm gonna activate that and then persisted yes because even if the user closes the app they can still come back and see their cards assuming they didn't pass the order or they didn't clear the cards so I'm gonna activate persisted and then press create good now the second thing the second app state I'm gonna use is the total amount and this can be a double and persisted as well this is not a list because you can just have one amount and then we're going to increase or decrease accordingly create good now let's go back and define some logic on this icon so open the action flow add action and what we're going to say is update the app state so app states works almost similar to the database because you have update documents we have updates app states and page states so page states only works on one page but the app states can be used across the entire application so you're going to select that and then the fields we want to update this so cut items and then we want to add to list assuming there's already something there if you say set value then you're going to delete whatever was there and then set up the new one but you're going to say add to list and then what are we adding we're adding the menu item reference confirm the second action here gonna be update app state again and now we're updating the amount and add field so this is going to be the total amount and we're going to say increment so assuming there's already something in the cart maybe ten dollars and we add something for eight dollars we want to be able to increment and not set value again increment so not by one but you're going to increment by the menu item price okay that works good now how do we know we've already added something to the cart so maybe i can add another icon so i'm going to duplicate this duplicate and then push it and inside here i can actually put this in a column and replace the icon by by a cart icon right so i'm gonna say cart here and that's set up and then in the column we're gonna add some text and this is gonna come first and that text gonna be what so it's going to be the app state the app state cut items uh number of items right and then confirm so we're gonna change the color so that you can see what you are doing secondary background so that's white and the action here is actually gonna take us not navigate back but navigate to i'm going to delete that 
but navigate to the cart itself so i've already created a cart page as well okay good now let's test this okay so if we go back and we have it start with zero so we're gonna add some logic there obviously but it start with zero but if i press add then you can see now it's one so it means i've added something to the cart that is working well and i'm gonna add some logic to this right here so we're going to add some conditional visibility here and say if the app state cut items is set and not empty then visible confirm okay good now the second thing we're going to do is once you press here you should be able to go to the cart but how do you know this has been added already so we're going to set some conditional visibility here and we're going to say if uh, the app state cart items list contains this item so reference confirm and then if it contains it but the opposite so if it does not contain it then show and if it contains it hide good I'm just gonna change this icon i don't think i like it much maybe find something rounded like this and make it a little bit bigger good the next thing we're going to do is go to the cards and select the list view right here and instead of adding a back end query because this actually is fetching data from the database or from some api but we don't have the option to actually get the cards items that are in the app states and i know you've been wondering what does this do so this allows you to actually generate children from a variable so we're going to name this a cut items and then the value gonna be coming from app state cut items and then confirm save and yes this is what we want to do okay good so now we're accessing so now we're accessing the cut items right the next thing we're gonna do is go to the container and as you can see here we actually don't have the option to go inside and say cut items image we don't have that option because you're getting references you're actually not getting actual documents remember in the app state we're storing document reference so we need to convert that into a document so we're gonna go to the container and add the backend query so we need data from the firebase but which is related to the app state so let me show you how this works so we're gonna go ahead and say document from reference because we're getting references and not the actual document but we need the document in order for us to pull the images and everything so a reference is like is like a unique number is like a unique id so you're going to look for a document that has that unique id so document from reference and then what document menu item from what reference from the reference that i'm getting right now on the list view so i'm gonna go there and then confirm done now if i go ahead and try to change the image now i have the menu item document here and i can go ahead and select cover image same thing for the title i'm gonna go ahead menu document name and then the price menu document price confirm but sometimes you might have already added an item to your cards and then you feel like Meh, i changed my mind so how do we remove an item from the list because here on the restaurant page we have an increment right increment or decrement and then the price so you're going to increment and it's saying here set the amount you'd like to increment this value use a negative number to decrement instead okay so we're going to go back to the cards and first thing we're going to do is open the action flow and then update app state select the cards items and then we're going to not set value not clear but we're going to remove from list and what are we removing 
removing the menu item reference good the second thing is actually to decrease the amount right because you remove an item we need to remove the price as well so action and then we have update document and then what are we we're not updating document sorry we're updating the updates and the field is going to be the total amount and then we have increment increment and they're saying we need to add a negative value so we need to add a negative number to decrements so we might say this might work if we could say minus 20 because we know the value but if we go ahead and say menu item we're moving the price this is still going to increment because there's no negative now what do we do in this situation so this is where we have to start thinking like developers right we actually have a number already so we have the total amount and then we have the price so we already have two numbers we just don't know how to remove the price of this one from the total amount but the code does so <laughs> we're gonna go back to our custom codes and this time we are creating a custom action because we need to be able to press or click on a button and then it does something and then gives me back the output so i'm going to add an action not a function an action this time and then i'm going to name it decrement and what do i have so i have two values i already have the amount one so this is the total amount or we can call it number one and this is a double and then i also have the price of the current item that i want to decrement so i'm gonna call this number two and then i'm gonna go back and the result yes i wanted to return a value and this should be a double as well so i'm gonna go back to code pilot and say decrement number two from number one and return the difference action good so i'm gonna copy this action yes i think there's an error here so we're gonna go back and change this to double and then we're gonna go back to copilot again and say decrement number two from number one and let it do its magic cool let's copy this action and save it so we're gonna go back to the icon and instead of updating the app state we're gonna go and do something right before so add action and this action right here gonna be a custom action so the action that we just created decrement and you need two values so the first value is the total amount so this would be in the app state and the second one is the current price or the price of the item and the output you can just call it results because this is important we're going to use it now go back to update app state and set value this time so we need to put the results the current remaining price so we're going to say value and then this one has an output so if i tap output We'll see the result that i just created and press on that and close good the second thing we're going to do is come here to check out and this is going to be a combined text and the first one going to be um check out of course check out and then oh we can do this the dollar sign the third one gonna be the amount so the total amount and we can just add the confirm good good now let's test this good 
So let's test this and go back to Uncle Fauzi. And I can see that both of these have been added. So if I press on the cut, it's going to take me to the cut. And 10, 8, it's calculating the amount correctly. So if I remove 8, it should be now $10. That means that the action is working. We are able to add items and remove from the cut. That's it for creating a cut in Flutterflow. The next lesson we're going to be talking about how to take payments. Because obviously, we want the user to be able to place their order and charge them some money. So for that and more, I'll catch you in the next one.